Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Kanga Ruthless, and I'm bringing you Game 2 in this series between SEC's Foxy Ad and Butternuts and Rowan spawning in the top right as the Green Terran will be Rowan as the Masters Terran player and the Green Terran. Uh, Rowan was able to take down Butternuts in the last series, and let me go ahead and introduce Butternuts here in the bottom left as the Orange Zerg. Rowan pretty much did a very straightforward uh, strategy that Terrans do. It's pretty much you uh, get down your barracks, you get down your refinery, you make maybe a marine, you feign some bunker pressure, while you get out your hellions, maybe four while you transition into something else, maybe say double orbital, which is what Rowan did last game, or potentially something like Banshee, Hellion, or I don't know, there's tons of options, it's just an opening that Terrans can do to apply some early game pressure to Zergs. Unfortunately, Butternut's um, not quite having the best build order and kind of falling victim to that bunker really fast, uh, you know, pretty much gave up the game there. So Rowan did some really nice harassment there, Butternuts was not able to handle it, and that was game one for you. But this is game two, and this is on GSL Daybreak. I mean, literally anything can happen from here. So we will see exactly what goes on. And again, this is game two of the best of three series between Butternuts and Rowan. This is the first game they'll be casting of this uh, SEC's Butter Bash is what it is called. It is a round robin style tournament where uh, all you have to do really is make an account on StarCraftCentral.net, make a post and sign up and you have a chance to win 50 bucks. Now how do you win this tournament if it's a round robin formula or format? Well, the person with the most wins and the fewest losses I believe in the round robin will win first prize. This is $50, I think second prize is $25 or $20 and third place is $5 and it can be split uh, more than one way. You know, multiple $5 prizes, of course. Now, that's just according to, uh, I guess, you know, how many people sign up. Of course, we had a decent showing for this uh, for this tournament. We would like to have more. So if you guys are interested in when this uh, next tournament may occur, definitely sign up. Again, that's on StarCraftCentral.net. And that is all the plugging that I'll do for this game. So here we have the spawning pool going down after the hatchery. Looks like the drone is in the base for uh, Butternuts. And he sees the, the, the timing of this refinery. And actually grabbing the Vespin Geyser here is a smart idea. It's going to keep the Marines at home. Uh, Rowan's going to have to play a little bit more, I guess, standard and a little bit less aggressive. Now, a bunk an Engineering Bay, wow, it's actually going down here. This is going to block some of the mining. But I feel like the Drone Sphere could be better served more or less just mining at this point. It's not blocking that much. You're not going to transition that many drones to this natural. Maybe, maybe four. Uh, so this Engineering Bay is actually kind of... A waste in my opinion I, I wouldn't do it but it's kind of thrown off butternuts who's losing mining time um, I feel like two Queens and then just drone up at this point because he's made an engineering bay you know he's not attacking you anytime soon but down goes the factory I mean at this point you really just need to drone up like super hard uh, you can you know potentially go for the Queen opener it looks like butternuts is going to go for the speed opener there is no problem with going for speed in this matchup it will help thwart those hellion uh, harassments that may occur but a couple of uh, Zerglings come to come out here and finish off this uh, engineering bay. Let's see if Rowan is actually paying attention and cancels it. Yes, he does. Nice cancel there by Rowan. And now this uh, reactor is done here on the barracks. It will swap out with the factory and we immediately have a command center. So macro play here from Rowan. Just going to make a couple of Hellions here at the beginning uh, to do some sort of harass. Now I'm kind of intrigued here as far as you know him getting the gas this soon. I'm thinking it wasn't maybe the best time unless he's going to go for a starport immediately after this because he is kind of sitting on 150 so gas. Just my thoughts. Um, I think maybe a starport here, earlier starport here might have been beneficial or at least a tech lab to get out stem. Maybe an engineering bay to actually get out a, a, an upgrade attack. Maybe not so much. In fact, he's going for double eBay. So this gas will come into play later, but it's lost minerals. You could do more. You could throw down a second barracks. Uh, you could pump out maybe another factory. So it, it is kind of hurting Rowan. He could be making more Hellions right now. But down goes to Tech Lab. And so it looks like this uh, double command center play will commence. Two Hellions meanwhile are just coming up, feigning some pressure. But here comes the Queen. She's right next to the Creep Tumor. Keep your Queens away from the Creep Tumor so that splash damage from the Hellions does not kill it off. So, I mean, it's not a terribly big deal, but it is one inject that is lost. Meanwhile, we have four Queens here. Looks like these two gases are being taken. 
So, very soon, Butternuts is going to be very comfortable. He's already blocking off the ramp with this one queen. He's got three queens, now five queens. Okay, so five queens. He needs to be a little bit more aggressive with these queens. Maybe make a spine crawler over here or an evolution chip or some kind of wall off so that Hellions will not have as easy of a time running by. So, I like this Evo block. It's going to kind of funnel the uh, units into this little section right here. This ramp is already blocked. It's not bad. It's just at the moment, Butternuts needs to spam drones, which he is doing. Eight drones are on the way. Uh, meanwhile, Rowan looks like he's produced all that he wants out of the factories for the most part. Is floating down his orbital command and is starting on a reactor on his barracks. Sim has already begun and down goes the bunker in preparation for this expansion. So everything looking pretty normal. Speed's about to finish up here for Butternuts. Just now completed. Now Butternuts can take these links that he might have or might not have and just run across the map or do something. It looks like right now he's just actually going to drone up. There's no problem with that. You can drone up as much as you want on two base. You use a lot of two base plays you can do, and these queens can be quite useful with shooing away Hellions. But you do need to get up that third as soon as you can. Or if not, at least prepare yourself for teching on two base. Uh, but it looks like Butternuts is going to take a third. It's a kind of a delayed third. In fact, uh, Layer is about to complete here, and he's not taking this third gas. I'm not quite sure what Butternuts is planning to do. It's a little bit uh, confusing. Back at Rowan's base, looks like uh, two gases have been taken, now taking a third gas. His, his gas is kind of high compared to his minerals. I feel like the gas timings could be a little bit better, but it's not bad. He's going to have plenty for these medevacs once they do arrive, and he can even start on combat shields or any sort of upgrades like that whenever he wants because he'll just have so much gas available to him. In fact, he is going for his 1-1, so the gas already there was quite useful. So this is starting to line up. It was a little bit suspect at first. But now Stim is done. Now if you need, you can get your Combat Shield, or you can instead go for your Medivac. So it looks like it will be Combat Shield. So defensive play here from Rowan, starting his wall off at the front. Meanwhile, Butternuts is going for like so much tech right now. He's getting Roach Warren in case there's a huge attack coming. There's no problem with this, but the attack would have already like hit. Your Overlord would have seen something like coming out. If the attack hits anything like past 10 minutes, it's a really delayed attack, and you should have plenty to fend it off. Decent creep spread here from Butternuts, I like this. Starting to uh, creep out across the map. Just making more and more drones, starting on that 1-1, one, one, getting Baneling speed. It's clear reconstitution. Now here's the thing. You, I mean, Roach Baneling, that's that's an interesting combination in Fester. I just feel like you don't need clear reconstitution in maybe this circumstance. I mean, especially if you, you know, maybe throw in a Zergling here, see a bunch of Marines. You don't need Roaches, you just need more Zerglings. So maybe don't commit as much to Roaches in this situation. An Overlord Scout, like, right now would be wonderful. Maybe make an Overseer, run in here, throw down a Changeling, and see everything that's going on. Army's going down with a nice timing for this 2-2 uh, two -two once uh, this 1-1 one -one finishes up. Here out comes the first Medivax. So, uh, I'm believing that Rowan's probably going to push out with this. Here he goes. So he's got a handful of Marines. Look at the Units tab. It says four Zerglings and a couple of Roaches to about 25 Marines and two Medivacs. With a handful of Hellions behind that first. Uh, and Fester's on the way, and I feel like right now, Butternuts is going for so much tech. I don't think he has the income to really afford this when you're going for this much tech. And here comes this marine pressure. Um, I think pathogen glands are done, but he's going to need to be uh, perfectly positioned to fend off this drop, which is on the way. Overlord should scout this and show know exactly what's going on. And so, yeah, there should be uh, an Infestor over here to potentially uh, fend off those attacks. Some roaches out at the front are actually going to take a bit of damage and force back this push, but now comes in the stem and immediately going for the drone line. It looks like the queen's going to go down first and then a bunch of drones, and let's see, it looks like maybe next is the baneling nest. That is a pretty big deal, especially if you're going for a marine-based army. And here come the roaches. The infestor's out. It can land a fungal, which, nice fungal, it actually does. That's going to burn a lot of energy off of these medevacs. We'll uh, get these... Uh, Marines down to lower health, but he needs to attack with all of his units. He needs to bring back all his units and attack these Marines at once. It is, this is doing too much damage. Meanwhile, we have lots of barracks down, and Rowan's kind of forgetting to macro at this point, focusing a little bit too much on micro at this point. Just lift up your Marines and get out. You've done all the damage you need to do. Don't, you know, don't push it. Macro is important here. I mean, you could have uh, about 120 supply Marines at this point. Another command center going down. Rowan's looking really good. Kind of slow on his 2-2 upgrades. He can totally afford it. Slipping in macro here a bit. But now starting on his Marauder production as well. 
Uh, this is kind of a dangerous push out from these Marines and Marauders. You don't want to push that far out onto Creep unless uh, you know that your opponent doesn't have anything, in which in this case it doesn't look like Better Knights has much. This Queen just kind of isolated. Uh, these Marines are coming in here, cleaning off a lot of Creep Tumors. Here come the Zerglings, gonna get a decent surround, but I mean most of these units have gotten out of here in one piece. So now the drops are going towards the third base. Fourth base is trying to go down here for Butter Nuts, but he has not dealt with these drops. He does not control this watchtower. These drops are going to start heading over to the fourth. He needs to get some units into position, but Butternuts is going to go for a counterattack. There are no, there is no Baneling Nest, so he cannot make these into Banelings, which would make this even more potent. But I feel like he is going to force at least a lift off here. These Zerglings getting a pretty decent surround, starting to pick away at this mineral line. Nice little run by here from uh, Butternuts and forcing a cancel on all three of those barracks. This. Yeah, there he goes to lift off. Nicely done. Now, Butternuts, if he knows what's good for him, he'll run immediately and get out of here before uh, more forces maybe come in and clean up this little pack. But it looks like he wants to push it, and this could be dangerous. You don't want to engage in a funnel like this. This is not going to work out for you. You are not going to have the advantage with this few infestors. So this funnel is just working so much against Butternuts. In fact, this infestor not able to get in here at all as defense is really stellar, and Butternuts could have had something going on here, but he's kind of squandered it with this, uh, you know, botched attack. Now these Infestors doing some significant damage, but they risk going down as well. So, I mean, look at what's what done here. Let's look at the unit's loss tab. Butternuts has lost a lot more than Rowan. He is now on three bases, but this fourth base is going to go down without contention. His units are just too far out of position. Uh, Butternuts not macroing here could be making a lot of Mutalisks. Uh, could just be running around the map harassing non-stop, but uh, instead this fourth base is going to go down. Had that fourth base, you know, stayed up, he actually could have teched a hive pretty quickly. Maybe gotten a uh, fifth base as well and just out macroed Rowan, whose macro is a little bit behind, but I mean he's up on the supply lead because Better Nuts just isn't making units. Uh, I guess not enough larva. <coughs> oh, so sorry, I meant to not sneeze into the uh, microphone. Another drop going down here at the third base will get cleaned up uh, without issue. Losing a couple of drones there, but not able to shoot away. I mean, some you know corruptors at least. I mean, I would go for mutilus in this situation, or just get a bunch of infestors and just spam away. I don't know. I mean, it's all up to you when you have this much gas. Um, but again, butternuts is continuing to drone up. I like this. But Rowan's going to now be on four bases, and four base Terran is going to destroy a three base Zerg. No problem. Spire's finally going down. 2-2 two, two on the way. Seven Infestors. Okay, so this is interesting. This can work if uh, Butternuts gets some pretty good engagements, can whittle down this army, and can force a lift off at this fourth. While taking his own fourth and possibly fifth, double expanding, he can come back in this game. So, it is still anyone's game to win or lose. Another drop coming in. This Overlord is again in place, but... Butternuts, what are you doing? He's re always retreating right when this drop is coming in. I guess he saw this uh, other drop coming here towards the front. Uh, sending his units in in a line, but here comes the other attack at the uh, at the main base. Uh, this will be plenty to do damage to the rest of this army. It is being forced back, um, but that's not enough to take care of it. He actually retreats with the rest of his army, being split in too many places. Two of the infestors potentially going down. Yes, two infestors. Three fungals are landed, and more fungals going down, but that's just not enough damage. And I feel like Bonus really bungled this uh, defense here. Rowan doing some nice multitasking. Uh, Still not doing the best job macroing, but we'll forgive him for that. He's actually winning these engagements here. A third drop going down here at the third. GG gives Butternuts before his hive can actually start kicking in. So nice multitasking there from Rowan. Unfortunately falling a little behind his macro, but it was enough to defeat Butternuts handily. So 2-0 wins Rowan for the round one of the SEC's Butters Bash. Rowan takes the lead, 2-0. So, that will do it all for this series. I will see you guys next time. Your host is always King Ruthless. Peace.